Hey, Matt. Medium voltage is like, everybody's talking about medium voltage these days. National Electrical Code in the industry. You are the product manager for medium voltage equipment for Eaton, and you're standing in front of medium voltage equipment. I'd love to have a discussion about it. Hey, Tom, thanks for asking. I'm actually standing in front of Eaton's Power Expert XGIS gas insulated switchgear. Pretty cool. And I, you know, when I look at this piece of equipment, what I think is really neat is you have a lot of digital stuff going on. You've got analog things going on in there. So those meters, I mean, can I put any meter inside of that? And can I communicate with those meters? I think it's really critical for a lot of reasons. So what gives with that? Hey, Tom, great question. You can actually use any meters or brand of relays you'd like, control devices within the gear. We always prefer Eaton if we can. Uh, but you, you see here with the digital as well as the uh, analog devices, you can control the switch gear from in front of it as well as in a remote operator room if you don't want to be inside the medium voltage switch gear room when around the gear when the breaker's operating or operating the three position switch. You can do that remotely. Okay, okay. So, so from an electrical worker perspective, if I needed to turn this on and off, I could actually do that remotely as well so I don't have to be in front of the equipment, right? Yes, Tom, that's correct. Similar to our air insulated equipment, maybe with the MR2 module, integral remote racking, you can be up to 30 feet away from the equipment. You could be in a, across the campus, a uh, different segment of the hospital, wherever this may be put in, data center. You could be anywhere, you know, as long as you can connect to it through a network, you can communicate and control the gear. Okay, so I'm looking at the front of that. I also see these little, looks like windows. Um, so, Usually you just don't cut holes in front of a, p a panel board unless there's, there's a purpose behind it. So what, what's going on with that? So I assume you mean the couple windows we have cut out here, Tom. What we're looking at here is a visual status of what's going on behind this door. This is the low voltage door behind here. There'd be no medium voltage present behind here. Only low voltage control, so 120 AC or 125 DC. Um, up here, what we have is this is your pressure gauge for your tank, for the gas inside your tank. Over here would be your earthing switch status, and down here would be your breaker status. So you can have that visual indication through the door. If you didn't want to open up and be you know, exposed to live 120 volt or 125 DC, you could visually confirm what's going on with your mechanisms electrically on the door with the push buttons and pilot devices, as well as looking through the door to visibly confirm the, the position. Okay, cool. So, so you, you're giving me the ability to check some of the status without opening that door and uh, getting, you know, again, keeping keeping everybody out of harm's way, and no matter what, even a shock exposure to, uh, to electricity uh, or energized parts and pieces. And, and, and I'm glad to hear that you've, you've reduced the voltage behind there so you're not looking at 13.8 kV or whatever it is because this is medium voltage stuff. Now, what impresses me is how small this equipment is. Like, what voltage does this go up to? So the Power Expert XGIS switch here is rated 5 kV to 38 kV. Great question about footprint compared to our air insulated offering. Our air insulated switch gear at 5 and 15 kV is a 36 inch wide structure. Even our 27 kV, 36 inches wide, but our 38 kV gear is 42 inches wide. What we're looking at here, this is a 2000 or 2500 amp frame breaker for XGIS. It's roughly 31 and a half inches. Uh, behind me here is the 1200 amp frame. That's roughly 20, 23 and a half, 24 inches wide. So a lot of space savings to be had with GIS just on the width. But also, if you think about the depth, this GIS units are only about 71 inches deep as compared to the air insulated units, which are about 95 plus inches deep, depending on voltage class and cable compartment configuration. Okay, so, you know, small is really good from a design perspective, small footprints. But now, the electrical worker, every time I talk about smaller equipment with the electrical worker, they are always saying, oh boy, now you're going to fit me into a tight space. Do I have this same concern with some, a, a piece of equipment like this? I'm a pretty big guy myself, Tom, and I can tell you without a doubt, I've been inside the cable compartments down here at the bottom. I've connected cables, uh, put things together down there, removed components. It is tighter, yes, but it's a very workable space. Uh, the XGIS gas insulated switch here is all front accessible for your medium voltage cable connections. Um, you know, very easy to get in there, connect those. If they're familiar with installing a, a pad mount transformer from Cooper, very similar elbow connectors here used to install the medium voltage cables. Okay, so now we're talking about cables, and I'm, I'm going to drift on you a little bit. So those medium voltage cables, every time we, we connect equipment in the field, another popular topic in the world of those who are familiar with the National Electrical Code and installation requirements, 100% rated versus 80% rated. Are, is medium voltage equipment 100% rated or is it 80% rated? Do you know? Medium voltage equipment is 100% rated. 
All right, cool. So when I'm connecting those cables down there in the bottom, I'm connecting cables at their ampacity, which is a great thing. Now, back to the electrical worker. Now, you mentioned that's once, why would I ever open those doors? If, if I open that door, you, you made a brief comment that it's not, it's not 13.8 kV or something behind there. If I open that door, what am I looking at? And then why would I open the door if everything I need is right through the door there, through the holes and whatnot? So if you needed to open the door, things like periodic maintenance, you just want to see if there's maybe any loose connections on your control wires, uh, maybe there's a maintenance activity you need to do or something like that. Uh, it's actually, again, just the control voltage behind here. Uh, demo purpose here today, we do only have low voltage power to the gear. Um, you can open it if you need to verify things. Another thing you might need to do is a maintenance activity with GIS. If you move your earthing switch here into the, into, and you want to verify position, Say you, know, you don't have a, a, if there's a camera system inside, say you don't have it networked out to your operator workstation, your SCADA system, and you need to verify what's going on. That could be one reason to open the door to look down in to verify the position of that earthing switch before you perform any maintenance activities. All right, cool. Now, what if, if I wanted to establish an electrically safe work condition inside that, even at, you know, because remember, anything above 50 volts is a shock hazard. Is there a possible way for me to keep that equipment supplying power to the load and, and basically create an electrically safe working condition with all of that 120 volts or whatever that's behind those doors? Can I do that? Tom, that's a great question. First off, control power for XGS, whether it be AC or DC power, has to be brought externally to the gear. Uh, an air insulated switch gear, you can install a CPT to provide that power inside the gear. Uh, now I will say this, if you were to turn off your control power and leave your breakers closed and everything else operating, you would lose your protection and controls functions in the gear. So you might not want to do that in case there were an overcurrent, under voltage situation needed to trip out the breaker. Um, people working downstream or upstream potentially could make an unsafe uh, situation. Wow, Matt, that is a very good point. And I, I never thought about that. So really, in reality, even though you can create an electrically safe work condition in that cubicle, you really want to take this, all of this piece of equipment down and uh, because you're, you're, if whatever you're doing in there anyway, you're probably going to want to do that just to make sure that that whole piece of equipment is de-energized while you're in there uh, looking at things or, or doing your maintenance or whatnot. Good, good point. Um, one last point. One last point. What did I want to say? We talked about the doors. We talked about the entry and the exits. The doors down on the bottom of this equipment you have open right now. Now, the door that's up atop, is it interlocked? And, and if that's interlocked, how do you handle the exposing the connection points down on the bottom? Couple things here. First off, the low voltage door up here can be key locked right here. Uh, there is no interlocks there or anything like that installed on this door. Uh, the cable compartment access door below is a bolt-on cover. So that does require a physical act. If you wanted to get in there, there's many bolts to remove from a safety standpoint. Uh, one thing I wanted to add too about a safety aspect of working up or downstream of the equipment. Uh, to gr effectively ground out your system through the cables here, what you need to do, get your circuit breaker open because you can't operate the earthing switch without it, you know, with, with it being in the closed position. Open your breaker, move your switch to ground, lock it in the ground position, then close your breaker again, effectively grounding out your cables for downstream maintenance activities that allow safe operations downstream from the switch here as well. Okay, you've said it a couple times now and I'm not asked, I didn't ask the question, but I'm going to ask it now. Earthing switch. Can you give me just a little, like a 30,000 foot vision of what the heck is an earthing switch? So an earthing switch would be installed integral to the assembly here. It'd be actually be inside the, uh, the gas tank with the vacuum interrupters, which are making or breaking your load. So inside there with the earthing switch, it's moving from the connected position. So a power comes in through your cables, would go through your VIs, through your earthing switch in the connected position, then up to your bus bars, if say this was a main breaker, and out to your feeders from there. Uh, now, if you put it in the open position, it's neither connected to your, your bus in a live system or grounded, and you move it all the way forward, it would be in the grounded position. And that way you can effectively ground out your system through your cables to ensure proper maintenance activities. Remember, in air insulated switch gear, we physically remove the breaker, and that's how we can verify and we can put things to ground that way. With this, everything being fixed mounted inside the tank, we have the earthing switch in there to achieve that. Okay, so based on what I've heard, gas insulated equipment is smaller in footprint, not harder to work on, still enough space for the electrical worker. There's features and functions here in here from a safety perspective to keep you separated from your medium voltage equipment. Uh, 
the, the other methods that we also offer in, in our organization uh, are, are, are bigger, right? And, um, and still provide the same safety factors and safety features. It's just you're doing it in a smaller footprint, more efficient in, in, the, in regards to, uh, in, I'd say, space. Because I'm, I, unless you tell me, do you think that this equipment performs as far as overcurrent protection, arc flash reduction, which we can talk about too, um, and, um, and interrupting of current and whatnot. Does this do a better job, do you think, than other equipment that we sell, or is, is it pretty equivalent on that in that regard? So gas insulated switchgear as well as air insulated switchgear, you know, when you're looking at your application, you really need to step back and say, you know, what am I trying to accomplish with this equipment? Where does it need to fit? Um, do I need to uh, make big changes to the gear down the road? And there's re that's really why there's both, right? I, I mentioned earlier, you know, withdrawable breakers and air insulated switch gear fixed mounted here. What if you need to go to a bigger breaker down the road? You got to replace the structure here potentially where air insulated, you could retrofit a cell. So really two different app you know, ways to apply the medium voltage switch gear. Uh, we're not saying one's better than the other. You know, they both meet 5 to 38 kV. Um, bus ratings, you know, things you can do with them are all there. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say we're not really saying one's better than the other, but both bring different things to the table. All right. Well, I can't go anywhere without talking about the arc reduction maintenance switch. I love that product, and I, I know I've applied it a lot, and I've helped people use it with regard to low voltage equipment. You know, a, is there an arc flash hazard at medium voltage, yes or no? And B, can we employ like thing, technologies like the arc reduction maintenance switch on this type of equipment? Hey Tom, great question about arc flash safety and arc, arc safe conditions in the gear. First and foremost, I wanna say, you know, with the cable connections and the bus bar here in the gear, it is touch safe components. You know, they, they are shielded and grounded components on both the bus bar and on the cable connections. And to further your question about arm switches and arc flash safety, uh, you can put arm systems into the switch gear as well. And you can install arc flash relays here as well if you want to. Um, that said, for an arc vent to happen here with the shielded and grounded systems in there, um, you know, leaving a wrench behind, things like that, maybe like our air insulated gear with exposed copper and things like that, it's out there. Yeah, you could have an arc flash there a lot easier, much harder to have happen in the GIS switch gear. Awesome. Really appreciate your time, Matt. I learned a lot about medium voltage equipment. I know I'm going to have a lot more questions for you, and I know right where you are, so I really appreciate your time. Great product, brother. Tom, thanks for taking time to ask a few questions today. As always, you know, I'm here at the Power System Experience Center. If you have any questions, reach out and let us know, and we're happy to schedule a tour or something else here for you.